So with the data in place, it's time to output it. So I will go into my routes folder in the index.js file where I render my index view. And now it's time to not only return the title, but instead to return an array of products through which I can loop in the view with handlebars. Handlebars provides um, a looping mechanism and then, well, output the right data in the view. So first step is to fetch all the, um, the items, so products. And in order to do this or in order to use this, I will need my product model from the um, from the models folder. Yeah, thank you. Webstorm had a little, uh, got a little stuck here. So importing that and then products can be fetched by simply executing product find with no arguments. And this does exactly the same I did in the shell client in the last video when using db.productsfind. This will give us the exact same data. Next, I can pass this data to the view with a separate new products variable. Now this name here is optional, and it's up to, not optional, but up to you, you may choose whichever, whichever name you like. And then in the index.hps file, I can loop through this. So the looping, however, needs to be planned because I will have multiple columns and grids now, right? And this was easy when hard coding this, but when looping through an array where I don't know how many items it has, of course I do know here, but you get my point in a real application you won't know. I need to be able to create rows um, once I reach the maximum number of items I want to have in a single row. Thankfully, Bootstrap will take care about collapsing it if we go to smaller screen sizes. But nonetheless, I know that the default setup will have three thumbnails in, in a row. So I need to break after looping through three items. The first thing, however, is to create a loop. And I use double handlebars or double curly braces to, to do this. And then followed by a hashtag to indicate a block statement. And here I will use each products. Now this will loop through all the products and I need to close that block statement by just typing double curly braces and then slash each. So like you close an HTML tag basically. Now this will loop through all the products and I can show you that this works by simply outputting product here. And then I will restart my server. And yes, by the way, you could of course install node monitor or some other packages, making sure that this gets auto restarted whenever you change anything. But I kind of like doing this on my own and keeps me, keeps me focused, whatever, but you may do this of course. So with that, if I reload, you see product, 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 proper product. However, that are a bit too much products here. We don't have that many products in our database here, right? The reason is that if we have a look at the code here in the index.js file, this is the same problem we had in the Cedar. The finding of products is asynchronous. Therefore, we are calling the render method here when we actually haven't gotten all the results back. So as you can see, it's looping through something because products is some kind of mongoose object at this point, but it's not the actual result. It's not the actual products uh, array. We get this array in another way. I can get rid of this variable here and instead I will create a new callback here where I either get an error or all the documents. And now inside of this callback, I will call this render method here and pass the documents here. Now, if I restart the server and reload, this looks much better. Now we got five products, which is exactly the amount we have in the database since we seeded five products. Great, so this is good, but of course we don't want to output product here. We want to, well, output the, the actual products. So 
I need to split after having three products. So I will kind of need to loop through chunks of products. Each chunk has three items and will make up a row. And then within each chunk, I need to loop through the individual items to then create the columns, right? The entry point to create those chunks, which we need to loop through, is in the index.js file. Here, I will create product chunks. This will be an empty array at the beginning. And I want to have a chunk size of three, of course, variable two. Next, I will create a for loop where I will loop until I reach my document length. So the until I'm at the last element in my products area or of the products I get back. But I will increase i not by one, but instead by the chunk size to jump in these chunk size, uh, chunk size steps here. Then I will use the product chunks array, push in new item, and this new item will be another array. You can go away, thank you. So this will be another array. So I will um, take my, my document, my, all my products here, and slice a part out of that. And I will slice from the current i, so from the current index here, or the current loop um, index, to i plus chunk size. So if we're at the first iteration where i is zero, then I will take a part of that products array, starting at the first element, all the way up to the fourth or the third element. So excluding the fourth element. So i zero plus three, which is the chunk size here, um, is three. So this will be the first chunk I take out. Now I go into the next iteration. i is incremented by three, since this is my chunk size here. So now i is three. It was zero. Now it is incremented by three. It is three. Therefore, the next slice I take is beginning at the third element, or the uh, actually the fourth element, since the index, the the array index there starts at zero, and I go up to well, this will be six. My array only has five items, so I will take the last two elements, and I will therefore have created a new array, the product chunks array, which has two elements, two arrays. The first array having three products or three elements and the second array having two. I then pass this product chunks array here. And in my view, I will still loop through this. I can leave this name products if I like. And I will copy one, or I will copy the row here, put this into this loop, get rid of all columns but one. And inside this loop, because I want to create this row for each chunk, therefore this is in the outer each loop. Now I will create another each loop, an inner each loop here. Inside this, I will loop through or I will create my columns. Since this will be the individual products in each row. And here I simply loop through this. This is a keyword in handlebars. If you have a loop, each products, then you can reference the current element of the loop with this. And this will be, of course, another array, since we have this chunk array with its elements, which are arrays too. And therefore, I then loop through each element. Now, with this, I can output the data. And I will start here with the source of the image. I can use handlebar syntax here, or a handlebars expression to, to again use this. Now this here is of course in this loop and therefore it's not referring to an array here anymore, but instead to the individual object. Now I know that this object will have an image path since, well, this is what I set up in the schema. And if I now reload this page, you can see it still works, but I get all the images. Lovely, looks good. And of course, I also get the old items here since I didn't delete that. So let me get rid of that code, reload here again. Looks good. So let's do the same for all the other pieces. So for the title, for example. 
and for the price. Now I'm not replacing the dollar sign, I will leave that. I just want to output the price here. If I again reload, this looks good. However, you do see that uh, we don't have equal sizes for all thumbnails, but for me, that is okay. Um, of course, you could fix this, and this button here should say buy, by the way. Didn't change this, as it seems, or it should say add to shopping cart. So, like this. Looks great. So, regarding the thumbnail sizes, it's no problem for me here. If you want to change this, you would have to set a minimum height on all of these thumbnails. But for me, that's okay like that. So with that, we're outputting the actual information we seeded into the database. And this is already an important first step. I'm happy to see you back in the next videos when we take the, well, next steps. See you there. Bye.